It's obvious when you're looking at the main menu with the various modes up and down the left side and with the active one highlighted. You can move up and down this list with the up, down, left, right toggle. They call it a rocker in the manual, which is also how you navigate on the information screens. The menu button will give you, with one press, any menu that's available for any page that's displayed in any mode. If you've been using an earlier Garmin handheld, you'll be ahead of the game. XM Weather is why so many pilots are buying this unit. It's all there, and there are different ways to use it. Things like lightning, satellite pictures, SIGMETs, METARs, NEXTRADs, storm cells, and synoptic features can be shown on the GPS map page, or they can be looked at individually on the weather pages. Looking at a weather page, we can cycle through all the available items of weather using the toggle. On the METARs page, the symbols are colored. Red is low IFR, yellow is IFR, green is marginal VFR, and blue is VFR. If you want more information from this page, hit Menu, highlight Show Map Pointer, press Enter, toggle the pointer to the desired location, and press Enter. The map pointer must be selected on the weather pages. It's always hot on the map page. The radar and lightning displays can be viewed individually on the weather screen or along with all the other weather features on the map page. In any weather mode, you can pan out to anywhere in the U.S. to look at the big picture, as so, or you can do the same thing on a map page. Another way of doing this is to expand the range, use the map pointer to move to an area in question, and then zoom the range back in for a closer look. The Echo Tops display can be used for some idea about whether or not a flight can be conducted on top. These are not actual cloud tops, but the higher the Echo Tops, the more serious the weather is likely to be. When looking at a weather area, it's interesting to look at NEXRAD, Lightning, and Echo Tops separately to get a complete picture. The satellite mosaic is there too, and the brighter white cloud tops can be indicative of thunderstorms. The only reason you would look at these items in isolation on the weather pages would be to see each item without any distraction. Now we're often flying and out of 3,200 feet GPS altitude. There's a warning about the Cincinnati Class B airspace, and then it shows us inside the Class B. We are IFR, so it doesn't matter. Indianapolis will be along our way, so let's check it out. You can put the map pointer over the METAR symbol to get the basic weather, or you can highlight the airport itself and press enter to get the whole nine yards of information about the airport. Now, what's added to the 496? Well, for one thing, it does very cool work on over 650 airports that have a detailed diagram in the database. This can be used in two ways. One is to position the cursor over the airport symbol and then zoom in for a detailed look at the diagram, like so. Isn't that neat? Way cool, though, is what happens when you power up the 496 when you're located on one of these airports. It wakes up right where you are on the airport, like so. If you want a bigger picture of where you're located, you can zoom out. The first time I turned it on in my airplane, it showed me parked between two T-hanger rows at Hagerstown, Maryland, which was exactly where I was. Then the 496 has all the information from the AOPA airport directory. This is quite complete. It is accessed through the AOPA tab on the airport page. Then you can scroll down through the info. There will be